What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and yes, I'm just a little bit sunburned. Yeah, that's right. But it might not be as bad as what uh, the United States is coming because Russia is testing us right now and the United Kingdom here. Take a look. Yeah, Russian military planes detected and tracked in Alaskan air defense zone. Yeah, Russia keeps testing the United States defenses, and I'll show you what happens here after this. Four Russian military planes flew into Alaska's air defense zones Sunday and again Monday morning, according to NORAD, North American Aero, Dispense, Aero Defense Command, which said the planes were deemed not a threat. NORAD said in a press release that it detected and tracked the four warplanes which were operating in Alaska Air Defense Identification Zone surrounding the U.S. and Canada, but remained in international airspace. Quote, this Russian activity in the Alaska ADs occurs regularly and is not seen as a threat, said according to NORAD officials. While this lies within a stretch of international airspace, NORAD tracks and detects foreign activity in the zone. The U.S. is on edge after Russian and Chinese warships earlier this month patrolled near Alaska's Aleutian Islands. Yeah, this comes after Moscow and Beijing, uh, Moscow and China, Russia and China, are working together as part of maritime drills. This is uh, quite the concern. This also comes here as they're sending Russian bombers to Britain. Does this remind you of anything? Uh, yeah, you can also see the headlines here. Russian Central Bank calls emergency meeting after the ruble plunges here yet again. Um, yeah, so the ruble has dropped considerably here recently and has dropped considerably here yet again. Yeah, so Russia is in uh, quite a bit of pain here and maybe also looking to inflict pain elsewhere as they're equipping their new nuclear submarines with their hypersonic Zircon missiles. Yeah, just uh, say that to yourself and let that sink in. The head of the country's largest shipbuilder said in an interview published by their news agency, their chief executive officer of their shipbuilding corporation said that work is already underway with sea-based hypersonic missiles. And the Russian ruble slid below 100 Per U.S. dollar on Monday, which is all the way down to 0 0.010, one penny flat to a dollar. And this is a one month chart compared to a U.S. dollar. And you can also see a one year chart compared to a U.S. dollar. It has been a dramatic fall. Uh, it used to be 0 0.016. Now it's 0 0.010. So I, th I think that's a 60% decline in one year. So that is a huge, huge decline there. Um, yeah. In fact, I believe this is just about the lowest it has maybe ever been for the ruble. So this is yet just another huge blow. And this will be a yet another blow here to the Russian economy and to Vladimir Putin because as they try to buy anything around the world or trade with other countries, this means that their money is worth even less. And also remember here that they, um, you know, 
most of Europe and the United States is not buying any oil from them, which is really their largest source of revenue. So that source of revenue is completely gone from them. This also comes here as Poland has detained two Russians for distributing Wagner Group propaganda. Remember that a large source of Russia is propaganda for the war. You even see this on YouTube and on um, really <laughs> pretty much anywhere is they have uh, bots and uh, they, they have people that go out there and <laughs> comment for them. Uh, it's, it's just a kind of a known thing to uh, go and help with the Russian cause. Uh, yeah, Poland detains two Russians for distributing Wagner Group propaganda. Two Russians accused of disseminating propaganda on behalf of the Wagner Mercenary Group in two Polish cities have been arrested and charged with espionage. Uh, yeah, they said here on Monday, they fly posted around 300 leaflets in Krakow which were among the 3,000 pro-Wagner items of propaganda in their possession. They were charged with espionage, among other things. Wow. Uh, Wagner groups uh, have also served as shock troops in Ukraine and are expanding their presence in West Africa, which is also potentially a new source of a new war, which the U.S. also might be caught up in here as well. Vladimir Putin also considering attending the G20 summit in person. Uh, he has not attended that here, um, I believe, in several years. Well, at least since the Ukraine war. Uh, I don't. I doubt he'll go. We'll see. He's also up here for an election here in. Let me see here. Election in nine months. Facing an election in nine months. Uh, yeah, I mean, do you really think that election will be fair in Russia? I'm sure he'll win it by a landslide, uh, just like Chinese President Xi Jinping, uh, who wasn't even supposed to be allowed for an election, for another election, and they broke the rules, and every lawmaker there in China, coincidentally, every single one, I think it was like 3,000 of them voted for him unanimously. They all voted for him and allowed him to have yet another term. And um, this, this, this is what happens with dictators, right? And um, uh, <laughs> there he is yet again, voted for again. And uh, I honestly expect something like this with Putin. And, you know, I, I expect him to win by a landslide. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, you can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. It's very similar to the vote that happened uh, for the Ukraine annexation. 99 point whatever percent of the world said, we know that that um, vote to annex Ukraine wasn't real. And yet, um, you know, when Ger with Germany, I was thinking of World War II, Hitler, um, when Russia went back and counted the votes, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, it's 90 some percent of the people voted for Russia to say that they want to become part of Russia. You know, they, you know, went door to door with these people, you know, basically uh, had to vote via Russian troops, you know, watching them. And then Russia went back and counted the votes themselves. So, yeah. And don't forget that there's thousands, maybe even who knows how many thousands, many, many thousands of children that have been taken from Ukraine, taken from their parents, sent off to Russia and may not ever even see their families yet again. So you got to also remember that, uh, you know, how crazy this war has been. And uh, it's tragic, absolutely tragic. Um, don't forget that that happened a lot in World War II with, with the Jewish people there and you know, just that whole absolutely tragic thing. Um, not only just the the gas chambers and everything that happened there, but also how many children and stuff got separated from their families. We're, we're literally seeing this kind of stuff happen yet again. I mean, it's 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 a documented, absolute 
non-disputable thing that um, Putin has separated thousands of children from their families and just taken them off to Russia. I mean, how do you even how do you even say that something like that is okay? Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here. If you haven't yet, subscribe down below. Click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thanks so much for liking and sharing these videos. Click here to see the Target and Walmart stores that are closing and why it's costing Americans more money. Or click here to see the new U.S. war that we're already caught in the middle of. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.